And this year, it's back in full effect. We've got perfect parade weather, especially if you stay in the sunshine. More floats, more bands than last year, and a great baseball season. Fingers crossed. That's what you do all the time. Yeah. And, and that, that, that's that's what you have to do. You have to plan for. This is the start of it, and you, you don't know what's going to happen. Hope springs eternal, doesn't it? Yeah. The Grand Marshals for the parade today are uh, 2023 Reds Hall of Fame inductees. A couple of really good pitchers, Bronson Arroyo and Danny Graves. Boy, good are they them. great guys, too. They are. And you know who's up there at the start of the parade with them is our own Jasmine Stiles. She's kicking the whole thing off for us. Hi, Jasmine. Jasmine. Hey guys, so we are at the start of the opening day parade. We've got our Grand Marshals, Danny Graves, Bronson Arroyo, and as you know, this whole thing kicks off with the sound of the blow horn, and today, Danny Graves' own son will be the one doing that. Danny, I know that you are so excited to be here as a Reds great. How does it feel to have that uh, tradition with your kid? That's pretty amazing. I didn't realize that they were going to want him to push the horn, but I'm glad he has that pressure and not me. I was going to say, you're a really important piece of today. Are you ready for the pressure to be on you, friend? Yes. Yes. Are you? Can you handle all the bright lights and the cameras and the paparazzi? Like to yes. See all these people out we here. like a confident kid. Danny, what are you looking forward to with the parade today? Um, just seeing all the people. The weather's great today. I can't believe opening day weather right now. I think the biggest thing is having everybody show up. You know? It feels like we're in spring training, not a season. Better weather than spring training. This is amazing. So I'm looking forward to just to, to wave and see some people, hopefully some old faces. And Danny, you know, of course, a lot of people are talking about the season. It's been a tough year for the Reds, and a tough couple years for the Reds, but with this, this is kind of the clean slate. What does it mean to you to watch this happen? Well, th this is the best part of opening day, uh, where it's everybody starts with an 0-0 record, so you never know what can happen in baseball. Everyone's equal. All right, kid, it's your turn, babes. We'll get, we'll get the jacket. He's worried, he's worried about your jacket. That's a good son right here. All right, guys, he's getting in the truck, and the official start of the parade is about to begin with the sound of the horn. <laughs> oh, that's a sound we like to hear. You know what that means. It is the official start of the opening day parade with our Grand Marshals, Danny Graves, Bronson Arroyo. It's going to be such a time. We're going to step out of the street so that these fire trucks can make their way through. We are going to push this way. Uh, Tanya Popovich, I'm going to send it back to you for a little bit while we uh, get in position not to get hit. <laughs> Good idea because the parade is getting ready to roll. And by the way, just to, we're just a couple of hours from first pitch, 410 at Great American Ballpark. The team just posted a video on social media as this parade gets rolling. We're going to show you this video. It's um, to get the fans excited for the new season, of course. You can see some crews if we can roll that video. They are putting the final touches on the paint of the field. They even, by the way, if we can ever get to it, there it is, there it is. They put... Um, a logo for opening day, a special one out there on that field. And before we even get down to the stadium, I think it's important that we start on this parade. You see that parade on the right side of your screen there. And down in the parade, guess who's out there, Popo? I bet you it's Evan Miller. I bet it is. Okay. Hey, Evan. Could you see me uh, bopping around above everyone else? Is that what gave it away? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we are here eagerly awaiting the start of that parade. Uh, as you can see, we're ready with the escort whenever it gets down here uh, to race in Central Parkway. Uh, people are starting to filter in, and you all sent me out here to find some of the more unique folks out here. I found a few winners already. These are my new friends from Norwood. Look at these hats. Uh, I think they, you, you got these hats just up the street, right? Mm -hmm. In Washington Park. All right, excellent. So these are, uh, duck down for us. Let's see these. That is a Coney. Hey, Wisconsin, I see your cheese heads, and I raise you a, a, a Coney head right here. So y'all are kind of playing hooky today, yeah, like everyone else around here? Right, yeah, yeah, we are. Is it first time, or is this tradition? For it's tradition, yes, but it's my first time since COVID, so I'm glad to be back. Good to be back. I came last year, but I wasn't able to get off work. So many people do this every year, bring their kids every year because they came as kids every year. What, is that, what does it mean to you, like, as a mom, to have them come down and just see this and be part of the atmosphere. It's just a fun Cincinnati tradition to start with our kids. Hopefully I'll come with them when they're older with their kids, you know. 
keep it going. Uh, not a problem pulling them out of school for, right? <laughs> nope, and I'm a teacher, so I guess I pull them out as a teacher, too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Everyone's playing hooky. You heard it here, and we're okay. So we've got uh, the uh, escort starting to clear the way here on Ray Street. That means that parade's just a couple of blocks away. I have one more thing to show you. I haven't talked to these people yet, but I can't wait to meet this dog. Hi, we're live on Channel 9, and I'm obsessed with this. Um, you won't find a more colorful creature oh along God. this parade route <laughs> than this pup right here. Uh, can I ask, what's her name? Her name is Kitty, like a cat. <laughs> K Kitty, the, K Kitty the dog. Very good. So, <laughs> what, uh, how long has she been this festive? Oh, a long time. I've done a bunch of different stuff on her. <laughs> She's 14 years old, and I've been dying her for like 13 years. At, at this point, she probably doesn't even bat an eye, right? <laughs> yeah, she's just used to it. She's a little diva, a little superstar. She's like, get your pictures, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think, wait, she's posing here for us. This is fantastic. Kitty, you've been so good. Thank you so much. Uh, this is too funny. Where are y'all from? <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, I live in Colerain. Colerain, excellent. Kitty the dog from Colerain out here being loud and proud on the parade route. You can't miss her. I saw you guys walk up and I went, oh my gosh, look at this puppy. Uh, it's going to be hard to top this. We're on the air here for two hours, and I think we might have peaked too soon here on the parade route. Anya no. <laughs> you might have, Evan, but please don't. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you so much for that. And I, I personally love the fact that a school teacher said, we're laying off a of school today because that's what it is, right? That's opening day. Yeah. So, hey, some special ceremonies, Tanya, are going to happen before the game tonight. Former Reds pitcher Todd Frazier is going to throw out the ceremonial first pitch, and there's going to be a tribute to the Reds players, coaches, and staff that we've lost this year, including Mr. Perfect Tom Browning. Kentucky singer Marlana Van Hoos is going to sing the national anthem, followed by a flyover performed by two of the F-16 Fighting Falcons of the 112th Fighter Squadron Stingers from the 108th Fighter Wing, Ohio Air National Guard Base in Toledo. And that's going to be great. That always makes the hair stand up when you come. And then, of course, you try to go, you go, oh, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, love the flyover every year. And, of course, down at that stadium right now are our own sports guys, Caleb No, Marshall Cramsey, our sports anchors. How, what's the feeling inside that stadium right now, guys? Hey, it's, it's opening day. It's a good time. Always an exciting time here for Cincinnati's unofficial holiday. Marshall, one guy who won't be playing today is Joey Votto not keeping him out of the stadium here. No, th the most exciting part, I think, of opening day for me is batting practice. Yeah. I love that feeling. And apparently so does Joey Votto, as we'll step out of the way right now. He's taking batting practice with third base coach and catching coach J.R. House as he's picking up some baseballs. And if you actually look right behind home plate, behind the batting cage there, that's Todd Frazier, former Reds third baseman, who will be throwing out the first pitch today, as you spoke earlier about John and Tanya. Frazier, he is won the home run derby here, remember, and he's throwing out the first pitch. Him and Votto were teammates, and he was giving him some advice as he gets ready to rehab and miss opening day. Yeah, of course, again, Joey Votto coming off that shoulder injury, which uh, ended his season a little bit early last year. We'll, uh, if you could stick with us here for a second, we'll show you Joey Votto getting some cuts and BP here. Again, he will not be playing today. He'll miss the first several games of the season. He's going to start the season at the AAA level, but you see him here getting in some cuts. He said recently, he told us recently, he feels good right now, but he just wants to start off the season in a place where he feels like he can get comfortable and play his first game, his first game of the season with the Reds. He wants that to go well. He wants to feel fresh and comfortable for that. Not to get too inside baseball, but one of the most important things about Joey Votto's game is his ability to hit the ball to the opposite field. And that's something he's doing really well right now. He's shooting the left center gap. He's already hit a couple out of the stadium. And again, Joey Votto probably missing between the first six to eight games of the year at least. But he's here opening day. We weren't even sure we were going to see him in the ballpark today. Yeah, interesting. We got the uh, lineup earlier today, uh, the official Reds opening day lineup. There was a lot of uh, there were a lot of question marks. Who's going to play first place, uh, first base? Who's going to play catcher? Because Tyler Stevenson, you know, we thought maybe he's the shoe in for that first base position. But Tyler Stevenson will indeed be playing catcher today. And I think the most important takeaway from this is not even Joey Votto injured could keep him away from a Cincinnati Reds opening day. I'm sure we have a lot more parade coverage coming up where you'll see plenty of people who will agree with that. We'll send it back to you guys, Ted, uh, Tanya and Popo. All right, thanks so much, guys. And in fact, Marshall spent a lot of time talking to a lot, a lot of these players and asking them their favorite memories of opening day. So speaking of Joey Votto, he talked about the fact that he would not be there playing 
for the Reds today. So listen to what he had to say. It saddens me because um, opening day means a lot to our city. It means a lot to me. Um, but, you know, this is, um, this is just how it's shaken out this year. I, I'm trying to hustle back and, and get back in uniform as quickly as possible and help the team. It's just going to be a little bit later this year. You know, he has been a fixture in the opening day lineup since 2008. I thought about that because Todd Frazier, even though he's retired and out of the game, he didn't come up till 20 to 2012. That's right. So here's Votto, who's already a veteran. Frazier came along. Frazier's retired. Votto's still trying to get it done. <laughs> I love that about Votto, though, that he's still out there playing for us. And you can see coming up right behind us at our position here at Cordon Race. Well, that's the Cincinnati Police Department's motorcycle unit doing some fancy little footwork with their motorcycles there. Looks pretty good, guys. And they're putting on a show for everyone watching the parade right here at our location. You can hear them yeah. loud and proud <laughs> running those sirens. I love that. And they, they're, 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 I mean, it, it takes a lot of maneuvering to do that. I couldn't do that on a bicycle, let alone on that. <laughs> uh, we're going to have so much more of this parade coming up, folks. Stay with us for the WCPO 9's coverage of the Reds' opening day parade. I'm excited to see the stadium packed. I'm excited for the parade and uh, definitely, I love Reds fans, you know, they're the best in the game and uh, they treat us with such respect and they give us a lot of love. So, uh, you know, I have nothing but love for the city and I'm very excited to see how it turns out. Forward to seeing him play this season. I think it could be a really good season for him, John. Yeah, if he stays healthy, I'll tell you what, he's one of those guys that has to make some progress. He has to keep building up. And he was, of course, Rookie of the Year. Oh, and, yeah. And so he has the potential. Yes, he does. Let's get up to the start of the parade, and that's where our Jasmine Styles is standing by. Hi, Jasmine. I'm John Morant. It's a parade in my city, yeah! We've got the coolest Reds fans out here. Guys, guys, I want to hear you yell. I want to hear you yell. That's what we're talking about. Everybody has a chance to win the World Series right now. We've got Grand Marshal Bronson Arroyo right here. Uh, former Red, bigger rock star. Bronson, tell us how excited you are to be a Grand Marshal. Oh, you can hear the people here. The energy in the city is amazing for opening day. It springs here. The boys of summer are going to play, and uh, I'm just I'm glad that I'm here for it. Uh, do you feel like you have a better head of hair than Jonathan India? No, I, de I, I definitely <laughs> don't, but I got a better curveball. <laughs> hey, now. All right, you're now a rock star. You want to sing Take Us Out to the Ball Game real quick? Oh, wow. Take me out to the ball game. Sing it, Take me sing out it. to the crowd. Sing it. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Uh -huh. I don't care if they ever come back no. for its roots. Root, root for the red legs if they don't win it's a shame. Or it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. That's a guy! 
<laughs> we are trying to keep up. I'm getting my steps in. The parade is going to continue to keep coming. We're going to send it back to Tanya and Papo before we run out of cord. <laughs> yeah, be safe, guys, and that was absolutely Dude, that was awesome. Great. We got some awesome stuff happening right behind us, and our Evan Millward is standing by out there. Hiya. <laughs> so the Reds are the first professional baseball team. These guys are the first professional fire department in the country. They always help lead the parade. Uh, these are your folks from Cincinnati Fire right here. Wave at them, everyone. Hey, can we get a... Hold on. I'm tall, but I'm not that tall, so they gave me a, an extender. Can I get a can I get a go red? Go red! <laughs> Happy opening day from two of your first professional units. The pro first professional baseball team in the country, the first professional fire department in the country. Always leading the parade and they're excited. Right, can I get a go red from you? I dare you to beat the cuteness of that. Go <laughs> and now that your ears are blown out, we'll send it back to you guys. <laughs> Wait, one more. Yeah, all right. <laughs> she got something out. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, Papo, the love, I love how Evan is bringing and Jasmine are bringing us all the people watching the parade because as much as the parade is such a story here in Cincinnati, it's the fact that Cincinnati shows up every year for this parade in such a big way. Look how these streets are lined. It's amazing. Yeah, and we saw it. We were here an hour before, and it was, it was just a smattering of people. Then all of a sudden, you get closer to noon, and it's every it's filled up. You can see it's several people deep, and they're cheering for the Reds. And the, the thing I like is this assortment of floats and everything. We had the Grand Marshals. Then we have the fire trucks. Now yep. we're going to get the bands and everything. It's it's just a cornucopia of Cincinnati. It is. It's kind of that this wonderful like cross section where you get just virtually everything. Well, I don't I don't know what this is right here, but it's like military and it's wonderful and then you'll have neighborhood folks you'll have people running for office who are, are in office that was the rotc and from where i'm hearing oh in pendleton county rotc and look at these guys i mean they they love this i was at a red's opening night eve that party that mm -hmm. brandy freaking puts on every year and these folks in, who dress up as the old-fashioned reds the right. red stockings and they still play the games like that they, with no gloves yep and that they're there's such a huge community that surrounds the reds whether they're good bad or indifferent some years are forgettable some years you can't forget well it's another sign of where baseball professional baseball began that's right and it and it shows the origins and that and the people and they, they still respect uh, baseball as it once was I know there are a lot of people that I work with now who are like what's up with this opening day parade yeah. and until they've seen it for the first time then they go oh I get it now oh. I get it yeah. it's hard to describe well you're from Cincinnati so you probably always knew it when I came here I thought oh big deal a parade and then I was always down at the stadium like Marshall and Caleb so I didn't see until I came up here and started doing the work with you and I thought wow this is great and it got bigger with Bart shot and everything. Oh, yeah. And, and and then it got more exciting. And now that has carried over over the years. It, it is it is running by us right behind us. You can see the floats coming right by us. And it's just fantastic. The energy, even like in our newsroom this morning, you can feel this kind of energy. You know, it was exciting. Today's exciting. It feels like spring is here. Baseball's back. Cincinnati downtown is alive and well. You just described why this is a big deal. It's a reawakening. You know, after winter, it's like we've been, you know, we've been in hibernation for the last few months. And now comes spring. It's baseball. It's it's being a kid again, liking to get outside, play baseball, and do that sort of thing. I wonder if we couldn't go back down to our Evan Millward. You can see on this per, th this camera, you've got a great band out there, and that is the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department's, I think, Bagpipe Corps. And so let's go down and check that out for a few minutes and, and just listen into them. 
They just passed us, you guys. So we uh, we're in the stretch now, where you're starting to get uh, you you have the the law enforcement, the first responders, the people who are out here keeping us safe during the opening day parade, during opening day, uh, and of course every day of the year. And now we're starting to get into the parade. The folks from Finley Market just passed by on their float, and that means we're really getting into it out here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, let you see what's coming down the pike here. We got some of the commissioners, Alicia Reese, Alicia Reese. Happy opening day, go Reds! I'm the honorary captain. We're gonna win it today. We got the best parade in the country. It's Reds Day. It's opening day. It's Cincinnati. Let's go! Happy opening day, Commissioner Alicia Reese, getting us hyped there for you. Commissioner Driehaus coming up behind us. Happy opening day, y'all. <laughs> let's go Reds and let's go down to the stadium when, where Caleb No and Marshall Kransky are standing by. You got a special guest there, guys. We do have a special guest. It's a Reds fan favorite, Todd Frazier, former third baseman. He won the home run derby here. Todd, you're back. You're throwing out the first pitch. Any jitters right now? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I'm more nervous than doing this than playing. But yes, it's always <laughs> great to be back here. I got the ball ready, I'll warm up, no worries, and uh, hopefully the crowd can will me to throw a strike. <laughs> have you been practicing the first pitch at all? How much have you practiced leading up to today? And and furthermore, are you going to be one of those guys? Are you going to try to smoke it in there? Are you going to lob it? What's it no, going to look like? I'm going to throw hard, so whoever's catching better be ready. I'm going to warm up in the cage. <laughs> Haven't been practicing, but I've been throwing a lot to the kids at home, and uh, my arm's loose, so you never know what's going to happen. Off camera, you told me you could maybe still bring it up to about 80 miles an hour. We'll see if the gun's out there. Yeah. I saw you talking to Joey Bottle, your former teammate, taking some BP. Uh, what was your advice? What were you talking to him about? Yeah, just bringing back some old memories and uh, asking him what is, you know, what he's doing right now. You know, talk to him, hey, what are you working on and stuff like that. That's the coach in me and the player in me, and uh, he's looking really good out there. Hoping for big things from him this year once he's fully healthy. Todd, what are you most looking forward to today? Obviously, this is Cincinnati's unofficial holiday. We got the parade going on yeah. outside right now. What are you most looking forward to today? Uh, the outside part, not not just only in the stadium, but seeing the outside part. My wife always told me how awesome it was, the parade, the fan interaction, and that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'll watch the game, but certainly uh, I'll try and get in and out uh, to see how everybody's doing out there, too. Todd, with Joey not on the active roster today, there are zero Reds players who have been in a Reds uniform for a true traditional opening like day. Packed house and yeah. all that. Yeah. What are what is your advice to them of that of something that might surprise them? Uh, just be yourself. I mean, the crowd's gonna be excited. They're gonna be into the game, enjoy the game. There's not there, there, you only get one opening day. So for the guys, first time, take everything in, take a deep breath, try and get as many pictures as possible after the game from whoever's here, and from the PR staff and all that good stuff. But enjoy it. Take a breath when you're out there. I know the games are quicker now, but at the same time, when you're running out to the field, take a look around and see how cool it is. On the topic of what Marshall just asked you, a lot of new faces on this roster this season, uh, some younger guys. What does this year's 2023, 2023 Reds team need to do in order to be successful or, or even more, more successful than people might think they can? Be? Yeah, well, first they got to understand, you know, to the rigors of the year. Uh, they have to understand, you know, it's not all going to be good and plenty. Uh, you're going to lose at, at the end of the day. Everybody does. So it's a mattering of either building off of those losses to understand, you know, we're good, or they can fall down and keep going further. So understanding that you are good, you do have a good team, but to focus on what you can control, and that's going out there and either pitching if you're a pitcher and hitting if you're a hitter. So control what you can control, not all the narratives. Doc, we see that baseball one more time. That's the yeah. that's the one that's coming up for the first pitch. I don't know yet. It could yeah, be. Hold, it hold that up for us. Let us get a shot of that. You can feel the love for no, the people sometimes. here. You we'll know, let you, like you know, kind of warm up, get ready to go for that first pitch. Oh, he's got a little curveball snap there. He's still got some rotation. Okay, Todd, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Best of luck. Throw it straight. Throw it hard. We'll send it back to you guys. Oh, thanks so much. And you know, the reason he's there, this is the 20th anniversary of Great American Ballpark. And all of you will remember 2015, the All-Star Game, right. and how incredible Todd Frazier was winning that home run derby. It was absolutely incredible. You know, he was supposed to come up and be here on opening day in 2012. He was brought up, and then on the day of opening day, the, the Reds traded for Alfredo Simon. They picked him up. They needed a roster spot. So they ta threw Todd Frazier back to the minors. Didn't gripe, did what he was told, 
a couple of weeks later they needed his help he came up and had a good season but he missed that opening day he's not going to miss today hey listen we're going to take a quick commercial break but a note to all of you if you want to keep watching this during the commercial break go on our streaming app wcpo9 because we're never turning away from this finley market opening day parade for real but we'll take a quick break and come right back Spring into savings at Jake Sweeney Kia. Lisa 2023 Kia Sportage LX. I was here for the first ever game um, at Great American. Um, I was at the last opening day at Synergy Field. Um, kind of just like bits and pieces of memory sprinkled in there. Um, I didn't go to every single one of them by any means, but um, I remember one of them, there was a tie. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was like so distraught that they didn't count all the stats. <laughs> like it really bothered me. Love that. Luke Milley, local product, local boy. Cub calf guy. And I'll tell you what, he's one of the guys that might keep this young team grounded. Get them. He had played for the Blue Jays. Last year he was with the Guardians, and he was very important to a young Guardians team that went to the playoffs. I think he's going to do the same thing for this Reds team. And I them sure out. hope so. Hey, listen, we want to check back in with Jasmine Stiles. She's at the start of the parade up at Finley Market. Jasmine. We are listening to the Thomas Moore Band right now. They're sounding pretty good out here. Man, I think Evan was trying to say that he has the livest block, and I think I have the livest Reds fans. Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Yeah, I, I'm going to go with I'm the winner here. We've got Reds fans in their best red and white ready to cheer on the big red machine. Uh, let's talk to some people in the crowd. How you doing? How you doing? What's your name? Rhonda. Rhonda. Is this your first opening day parade? Second, fourth, twelfth? been coming for a while. Off count. We usually go downtown to the square. What makes this probably the best spot to stay at? Uh, I like just being able to get up close and personal. The kids are slapping their hands. They're throwing them some uh, party favors. It's a good time. We love that. You shoot my mom. That's She's her mom. mom. Okay. Uh, so tell me, how have you been having a good time out here? That's yeah. Fun. It's really fun. What's been your favorite flow? Um, Probably with all the army up there. That one's pretty fun. They were yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Anybody you're looking forward to seeing? Oh, well, um, that parade up there, I just, it seems really neon-y and fun. Uh, no, I, I, I completely hear you. You need a little bit of neon in the rest of the red. Alrighty, we are going to stay here at the start of the parade. Still got a lot more floats to go. I'm going to send it back to Tanya and pop up. Right, neon and fun. I'm in for all of that. In fact, our Evan Millward is with one of the smoothest, sultriest voices in all of Cincinnati. Evan. <laughs> yeah, you can't miss the voice. Jim Scott, you're walking down this parade. You've been, you've done this a lot. How I does think, it feel this year? Great. I think this is your sixth time, right? Yeah, about six, yeah. Uh, it's 55 for me. <laughs> I got a long way to go to catch up to you. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's a great day. I mean, it's perfect, isn't it? Oh, uh, we can't ask for nicer weather. Did you see Bronson Royo? I did. Yeah, he's friendly. He's a nice guy. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. What do you make? You know, this is uh, it's obviously it's the start of spring for us in Cincinnati. Oh yeah. We have perfect weather. What do you make of this crowd? Oh, this is a great crowd. I mean, yeah, th this is huge. And did you see Marty Berman yet? No, I haven't seen Marty yet. Yeah, he's coming up. Okay. He, he wants to walk, but they said no. He had a ride. So <laughs> that's what do you make of this Reds team? Yeah. Oh, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. It's got to be better, right? I mean, sure, you can hope springs eternal. Absolutely. We've heard a lot of people say that today. Well, I think it's, I, why not? Exactly. I mean, yeah, why well, think the other way? That's, look look what happened with the Bengals after all those years. That's true. All right, I need you to do me a favor, Jim. Will you toss back to Tanya and John Popovich for me? Oh, sure. Popovich, huh? Yeah. Uh-oh. There's a famous name. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> a famous name. I'll let you keep walking. Jim Scott, right. thank you so Tanya, much. Tanya and Tanya O'Rourke. Jim Scott, thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's oh, good. Famous Jim name. lives in southeastern Indiana like I do, so yes, we run does. into each other every now and then. So he's always fun. And let's look at another Hall of Famer here, Tanya. Yeah, Jasmine Stiles up there with Big Anthony, Anthony. I know you're you're riding. You're a Bengal, but we're all Reds today. Tell me what's uh, exciting you about the season. Hey, it's tradition. It's the Cincinnati Reds opening day, and it's community. I mean, just look around. This is a great sports town, and uh, I'm excited to get the Red season open. And here we are, opening day parade, then later the game. You think the Bengals can spread a little uh, winning dust on the Reds to uh, get it to a, a better season? Right now, everybody has a World Series shot. Exactly. I hope that happens. It'd be great to to witness the playoffs. It's been a long time since the Reds have been in the playoffs. And uh, being a baseball fan myself, and I know this is a great sports city. We need to get both the teams in the playoffs year after year. I know that a lot of people are rooting for the Bengals, and the Reds could really use some support. What would you say to your diehard Bengals fans to go support the other home team? Put the Red on, and let's go Reds. I tell you what, we need to be behind them. Thanks, Anthony. All righty, uh, you heard the man. Put on your best red. We're rooting for the home team. Like we said, everybody's got a shot to get to the World Series. Everybody's zero and zero. And we are rooting for the Reds when they take on the Pirates at 410 this afternoon. Tanya Papo. Great job out there, Jasmine, having so much fun. And I love what Anthony Munoz, of course, such an incredible guy, saying it's about tradition and it's about community. And he's absolutely right. He also knows of being on a team where you show up and nobody expects anything of you. Right. The 1981 Bengals, they had just been coming off 6 and 10 seasons, 4 and 12 seasons. All of a sudden, they caught fire. Young guys helped provide the momentum, and they went to the Super Bowl. We, we just saw the Reds Hall of Fame and Museum entry running by us. The Reds Community Fund is right there on your screen. Oh, look, I don't even know who that is coming down the pike, but we know right by us is the Reds Community Fund, which does such great work, and that's Miss Indiana. Yeah. And so congratulations to her. Reds Community Fund with Charlie Frank has been there, for, I think, 20 years or so, and they rebuild so many, so many baseball fields and help kids play baseball in this town. They know how important it is to get baseball among the kids. Boys and girls playing the game uh, uh, because get them outside, do things. Let me go back to it so we can, I can say exactly who that was. That was Miss America 2000 with the current Miss Ohio, Miss Kentucky, and Miss Indiana. Wow. Yeah, that's right. So Heather French Henry was with the, was there. As, along with those other beautiful and talented women. So I want to make sure that we got that absolutely correct. You know, it's so fun to see all these different entries and all the smiling faces and all of that red, John. Oh, yeah, it is. And guys that dance like that. <laughs> I've never been able to do that. And I'm... Like, yeah, they're there. They're looking at roller, the roller skating. It's there. fantastic. I was wondering how they were moving so well. I thought they were. <laughs> you just I thought was... they were grooving on their own like exactly. that? Exactly. <laughs> But look at them, and they're able to do that and don't fall down. And yeah, this is, you know, it's it's, it's small time, but it's big time, and it's Cincinnati's time. And it's, it's, it, it is terrific to be able to see all this. 
Yeah, it is. Cincinnati um, is absolutely experiencing a renaissance. It's downtown, the sports teams. As Anthony Munoz said, it'd be great to get the Reds and the Bengals in the playoff in the same year. Wouldn't that be an extraordinary thing as we see these guys having so much fun with everyone along that parade route? And there he is, of course, Marty Brenneman and his beautiful wife. How fantastic. Hopefully, is, is Evan down there with them? They, they can grab they can grab him. Oh, there he goes running by. Hey, Marty. Good to see him out there, as always, being part of our Reds community and our community in general. You know, years ago, Marty started walking and running and, and was mainly walking. I got himself in the shape. So I'm guessing Marty is about 80 right now. Oh, my gosh. They're pretty is close. He really? He's, he retired, I believe, in his late 70s. I think you're about right. And he's in fabulous shape. Fantastic. And Walks would... his dog in the stroller, by the way. Did you know that? No, I didn't they know that. They have a little tiny dog, and he walks it in a baby stroller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Telling tales on him, but yeah, he does. Yeah, but he's in great shape. He and Amanda do so much work around Cincinnati and for Cincinnati, and you know, it's just a fantastic. He's still, hey, still a very visible, and I think that was really important. Be yeah, Evans down there with him. Go, oh, let's go to man. that. <laughs> Two of my favorite people. Oh no, why is that? They're just great people. That's you're gonna all. go straight to their head. <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay. They can handle it. <laughs> what would you say? They're listening to us right now. Uh, I love them both. Ah, uh, there you go. All right, so you love this Reds team too, yeah. What do you make of this season? I think people have to realize this is still a season in which this club is going to try to mature their young players. They're not going to be a team that's going to win the division. Anybody that thinks they are are delusional. But this is an important period for this club this year and, and into next year because all this young talent that they've acquired and when they traded off veteran players or kids that are going to be good big league ball players and we all have to be patient with the way they mature and, and how quickly some do as opposed to others. Jim Scott just told us hope springs eternal today. Well it does you know every every year people think uh, we had a chance. Uh, it would take divine intervention for this club to be an impact player in this division in 2023. And that's not a negative, that's just a realistic look at this ball club and, and, the, and the period they are in and the process that has to go forward in order for them to get where they want to be down the road. Awesome. Marty, you're a legend. Thank Happy you. opening day. You Thank you. Thank you. Marty Brenneman, y'all, with awesome. some nice so kind words for our friends back at the set. <laughs> Pretty good, got him. Marty Brenneman talking about us, huh? Not well, I, I appreciate that, but I appreciate also what he says about the Reds. Yes. He knows in the last time the Reds lost 100 games was 82, and it took a few years for that to turn around. But then the Paul O'Neills and the Eric Davises and the Cale Daniels and the Tom Brownings and that stuff all started to mature like these guys are eventually going to do. But you have to have patience. By the way, if you heard that, all that music, it was a UC Bearcat marching band that just went by us. And if, um, by the way, a couple things here. You can always stream this on WCPO 9. So when we do take a break, don't worry, it's there. So you can take us on with you if you want. But also, you might be wondering, where's Craig McKee? Well, I'll tell you where Craig McKee is. He's on, a, I think, a destroyer or a battleship right now. And he's with some um, Navy folks. And one of them wanted to send a special message. So as we take a break from our parade coverage here on WCPO 9, let's watch that. Hey, this is a chief uh, musician, Jake Stith, from the U.S. Fleet Forces Band in Norfolk, Virginia, and a lifelong Reds fan. So uh, let's go home, team.
Day parade and WCPO 9's coverage of it. I'm here alongside John Popovich, of course, and I want to get straight out to Evan Milward, who is with our mayor, Aftap Pureval. Ah, Mayor Pureval, another Beaver Creek High School <laughs> alumnus. Uh, all right, so opening day is back. Yep. Baseball is back. What does this mean to the city of Cincinnati, putting us on like a national stage? Cincinnati's back. I mean, this is an incredible tradition in our city to, yes, celebrate opening day of the Reds, but really to celebrate the several generations of Cincinnatians who are here to celebrate our history, but also so much optimism, so much energy about our future. I cannot wait. You and I both grew up up the road a little bit, but I remember opening day being a big deal. What Absolutely. do you remember about it as a kid? I, I just remember that there was so much hope and optimism every uh, opening day for the rest of the year and specifically for the rest of the Reds and that same optimism is true today. Jim Scott told us a little bit ago hope springs eternal that's today. Right, right? That's right, exactly. Excellent. What's your message uh, to the people watching not in the city of Cincinnati today? They've got to, if they want to see re a real sports town, if they want to see a community that loves their city so much, they've got to come and move to Cincinnati. Mayor Aftab, Pierre Revolve, thank, thank you, you so Happy much. Opening Happy day. opening day. I love all Guys, the Cincy gear. Here. I've got Cincinnati on. Right. Evan does. The mayor does. I mean, we got it all going on here today. Pop I on. like the the width and the breadth of Reds country. You see a couple of guys really from Dayton <laughs> talking about there. Well, it's part of Reds country. That's yeah. exactly it. But it goes way further south and east and west. Uh, Jasmine Stiles yeah. is uh, also uh, with us again, and boy, she's been bringing a lot of energy to this. Jasmine. Hey guys, uh, again, parade's still going. Mount St. Joseph University in Cincinnati. We've got uh, some of the alum here, some of the students. We've got the mascot, can't forget the mascot. I know he's representing the Lions, but we're all Reds today. You go, guy. We've got the cheerleading squad. Girls, let me see something. There we go, I can do that too. We could, we could all do that. All right, now we've got the band. Some of the best parts of the parade to me has been the music. We saw Wilberforce University that passed us not too long ago. That should be coming up on Tanya and Papo in just a bit. We did a, you might have seen the feature on them this morning during Good Morning Tri-State. This is our first time in the parade. And man, I'll tell you, you've never heard a band until you've heard an HBCU band play. They just have such a unique sound. Um, and that's really exciting to see out here uh, during the Reds opening day parade. Floats are still coming. We've got fans young and old out here ready to celebrate the reds when they take on the pirates at 4 10 this afternoon guys why are you so excited to be in the parade because i'm a dual athlete i know that's right what do you play volleyball track and uh cheer okay come on triathlete <laughs> uh, tell me what does it mean to you to be out here supporting your community um i'm not from here but having the opportunity to show my strength and skills in a different environment is a lot to me and I mean, I know you said you're not from here, but you're cheering on the Reds. Anything you're excited to see for the season? What they decide to bring as a team together. So whatever they show up, I'm going to support. As an athlete, what can you say is the hardest part about uh, managing the expectations of fans? Um, staying positive, even when times are up. So that's probably the hardest one. We appreciate you for talking to us, bro. That float is moving. I'm getting in my steps, and I just did that backwards. Tanya, Papa, I'm going to send it back to you. I'll catch my breath and maybe get some water. <laughs> Woo! All right, get some stretching in, Evan, or Jasmine. Get some stretching going on. If you do your steps backwards, does it take away steps? I don't think so. No, it doesn't. I hope it doesn't, because <laughs> that would be a big bummer for everyone involved. Um, Coming up behind us, I think, is the Anthony Munoz Foundation. We know Jasmine spoke with them a little while ago. Um, great organization doing so much for our community. And you can see behind us, the crowd is really thickened up, you know, right here at Court and Race. Come down and see us. And look oh. at that mustache. Oh, my. That's the Cincinnati Beard Barons. How fantastic. And look at those guys looking so spectacular in their throwback uniforms for the Cincinnati Reds. 
Again, it goes back to the history here. Beard barons, beer barons. That's right, do and there's you know. the beauty to life. There you go. About, talking about beer barons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it is the appropriate place to hold a parade if you're a beer baron or a beer drinker. That's right. You know, right in over Cincinnati. the Rhine. So much uh, grew out of here. Uh, I was surprised to hear Finley Market, of course, has been around for, I don't know, 150 years or so. But there used to be nine markets really? downtown like that. It's the only one that Steers survived over the years. And for them to be able to be put this parade on every year, I just I just think it is great. Those, those why, why don't we listen into the Oak Hills marching band for a second? If the, oh, they just finish up as I say that. I have excellent timing, John Popovich. Absolutely <laughs> excellent. It's a nice timing. big band, isn't it? <laughs> Oak Hills always brings a big band and uh, So they got the Oak Hills marching band with the Oak, the dance team in the front, Oak everything yep. like that, having so much fun. And then behind us, we got people shouting who day. It's a Cincinnati <laughs> day. <laughs> it's fantastic. Coming behind us, Miss Indiana and all of the beautiful people involved. We got all kinds of people stopping by and waving at us, so we're waving off camera to them and stuff, having a great time down here. And uh, I see there's a, uh, uh, the, you hear the who day because I think a lot of Bengals went by and they have a one float that has Shane Graham, Doug Pelfrey, Jim Breach, oh, all former on. kickers. Fantastic, that's right. Of, the, of the Bengals. Great. And then the, uh, with, with Anthony Munoz in that, he had Ken Anderson, uh, James Brooks, David Fulcher, Lewis Breeden, a lot of great guys. That have uh, that have and they've had made success. Cincinnati home. That's yes, really they what did. I, I mean, we love that about all the the athletes who decide to stay in Cincinnati because they find out what almost everyone who transplants to Cincinnati finds out. It's a great place to raise a family. It's a great place to call home. It's the biggest little city in America, and it's the smallest big city in America. You have everything you need. You have major league teams, sports teams. You have arts, ballet. You have symphonies. Yep. It's Abs theaters is just a fantastic place to live. It's vibrant and it is fun. Yep. And it's the only one that has a parade like this on opening day. Yeah, all, that? all those things you mentioned uh, are, are just, you know, when you, you really size it up, what Cincinnati is. And it is, it is a town of neighborhoods. It's a big town, yep. but it has a bunch of small neighborhoods so you know everybody. That's 52 neighborhoods. And let's add another set of numbers to this opening day. It's the first time that every single Major League Baseball team is playing mm -hmm. on opening day. Yeah, I'm told that was the first time since 1968 it will happen that every team will play on opening day. They had planned this to happen in 2018, but that didn't happen because a couple of games got rained out. So, uh, and I, and I think that what they want to do is they want every team to start on opening day at the same time and then they end on the at the closing time. And, uh, you know, it's 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 a game that is continuing to evolve. And uh, we'll talk about new rules changes later on a little bit. I'm a quick mention that we are at Northside distilling distilling out right here. They're allowing us to use their parking lot for the day so we can bring you this parade. So we want to thank them. Absolutely. Thank you to Northside distilling. We're going to take a quick break. Don't worry. The parade remains on WCPO 9's app or WCPO.com if you want to watch there as well. We're going to take a very quick break. But before we go, some thoughts from Hunter Green, your opening day pitcher. You know, I've only been to a couple and it was such a special experience. Like I said, it felt great just being there and now to be on that island, on that field with, with my guys behind me um, and share the day with the rest of Cincinnati is going to be really special.
of the 2023 Findlay Market Opening Day Parade. Welcome back and what a glorious day for the Reds opening day parade. You can see the Wilberforce marching band headed towards our camera here on Ray Street and Court. It is an absolutely fantastic day. I'm Tanya O'Rourke joined by my friend and former colleague. So glad you could join us today, John Popovich. It's great to be here. I, I never heard of the Hounds of Sound before, but I guess this is the first year as a band to be here. Wow, that's, that's, that's it's, it's great. We can feel them coming up behind us, like the pounding and the, the reverberation. They sound so found fantastic, that Wilberforce band. So exciting to see them here for Red's opening day parade. Let's head up to Finley Market where our Jasmine Styles is standing by. Hi, Jasmine. Hey, we're just dancing along. Now you know that the parade is a very old tradition and we've got fans young and old. I think I found the youngest. What's this little one's name? Harper. Harper. You've got her all dressed up, decked out. What does it mean to be able to continue this family tradition of going to the parade and uh, being one with the community? Um, it's been great. She's having a great time. And uh, yeah, we're, we love to come down here. Harper, it looks like you want to hold the mic. I'm going to let you do that so we can talk to mom. Oh, oh, never mind. Okay. So tell me what it's been like for you to uh, kind of be out here, you know, play a little bit of hooky and, and be able to just kind of celebrate the Reds in this fashion. Awesome. It's a beautiful day and we're just dancing away. I, I would say the oh. same thing. Harper looks like she oh. wants the, the microphone. I'm going to pull up this hat so you can just oh. see how cute she is. Look at this. I'm going to take this hat, Harper, if that's okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All righty, we're going to send it back to Tanya and Papo as we continue to follow the parade. <laughs> and I give Harper her hat back. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Harper wants that hat back. <laughs> you know as a reporter, if you ever did a kid, first thing they wanted to do is grab the microphone. Yeah, they always grab for the microphone. <laughs> I love the jazz. like, I'm taking your hat. And that baby's like, uh-uh, give, yeah. <laughs> give it back right now. I hope they have this videotape someday so when she's about 20 years old, she's going to be able to see <laughs> that. She I don't remember any bit of it, but I'm sure it was a ton of fun. We just had the uh, Wilberforce band completely go by us. Our bodies were shaking from it. <laughs> And the Finley Day Market Opening Day Parade Committee Hank coming right behind us right now. Can you hear them? They're having a ball. Is our Evan Milward available for us to go down to him? Evan. Hey, look, we're two peas in a pod. We are two peas, two in, peas a pod. in a pod. Two peas in a pod. Right. These are Finley Market uh, folks out here live at this parade with us here. I want to introduce you to new friends from Bond Hill. Harley and your son. Yeah, this is Dorian. Say hi, Dorian. Hi. Can I get a Can I get a, a go red? Yeah. Say go red. So, Harley, is this tradition for you guys? Well, this is actually our first year. So this is the first year we ever come down. Yeah, I've been here all my life, and first time me and the little guy came down. So. What What made you say this is the year we're changing? We're going. Well, you know, he's off school, so it was like. Spring break, hey, you know, it's Thursday, it's a beautiful day, why not, come on down. We love it when a plan comes together. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> what do you make of it so far, first time? I love it, love it. We're having a great time down here, so that was a really good time. What do you think? Good. Good? Uh -huh. Awesome, I like this hat, man. It's pretty cool. <laughs> there you go, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. So, what, what has been your favorite so far? You know, just uh, I like to see the police and the, the motorcycle styles cool, getting to see just everybody. Everybody having a good time on this beautiful day. You know, it's, you can't beat it. You can't you know, beat it. It doesn't get much better than this. Their first time here, Harley and his son from Bond Hill. We'll send it back to you guys. All right, thanks, Evan. And coming up behind us here, where John and I are located, is Wiedemann's Fine Beer. And I'll tell you what, they have a horse-drawn delivery wagon coming up right behind us. So cool to see that. And Jasmine Styles is up there. She's got someone special with her, John. She has George Foster, the most valuable player in the National League in 1977. What a hitter he was. Saw him hit a couple into the red seats. Let's go to Jasmine. Thanks, guys. George, so happy to be with you, friend. Uh, tell me what it's like, man. You were playing in the 70s. How has the game of baseball changed, and what are you excited about this new era of player? Well, the big thing that hasn't changed the fans, all the loyal fans, Cincinnati Reds fans, they really know the game, and it's always appreciative to know that they're still out there supporting the team. Uh, it's just more the attitude now, but if they understood that the Cincinnati Reds fans are really there for them, they would go out there and, and play better ball up for them. 
fans have strong expectations out of this team, especially with a rough couple of seasons. How do you balance fans' expectations with how you play as an athlete? Well, for us, you know, it was easy in a sense because we knew that they were there and we wanted to make sure we got ourselves in the best shape, being prepared for the season because we want to go out there and play a good game to show them that we appreciate their support. And then, George, what would you say to the fans? You know, they're out here right now, but sometimes during the season, they can wane, they get off the bandwagon. What would you say to fans right now to keep this momentum? Well, stay patient, and, and I just wish that the, uh, the Reds would bring a lot of kids to the ballpark. That's how you grow the game. Let the kids get more involved in the game, and that's I feel that's the, the heartbeat of uh, America. we got to get the next generation on America's favorite pastime. George, thank you so much, so much. All right, you heard what he's talking about, and of course he's backing it up, walking like he's talking. Has a lot of kids with him here during this float. Uh, trying to get the next generation of baseball fans and baseball players into what we know as the Reds today. Everyone's super excited for the game, and of course, you know, WCPO has got you covered all the way up until 410 when they play, and then beyond. All right, Tanya, Papa, I'm sending it back to you. Okay, just so people want to, like, coming out of what you might have seen on your left side, that was a Dragonfly Foundation. They had a 10-car train for kids, including a little caboose that carries a wheelchair oh. for a child who is handicapped. And George, I mean, how great to see him, George Foster. Well, you know, you think about it, how long it's been. But he, he makes a great point about getting that next generation in. But they didn't get to see the big red machine. Foster in left, Geronimo in center, awesome. Ken Griffey in right field. What an outfield. And that's probably not as good as the infield was. So uh, to see George Foster and that stuff, I, 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 it's again, it's it's a recollection back to the past. But he knows the future is the key. So you're talking about such incredible players from the past, and that includes Todd Frazier, who, I mean, as as you guys all remember, we talked about it a short time ago. He won while he was a Red, and the All Star Game was right here in Cincinnati. He won the Home Run Derby at that All-Star game in 2015, and he's going to be throwing out the first pitch this year. Look at this. There's a little gap in the parade, so let's take a look at this. He's going to do the first third baseman, former Red, Todd Frazier, drafted by the Reds in 2007. He spent five years here in Cincinnati making two All-Star games and winning the 2015, as mentioned, home run derby at Great American Ballpark. He also spent time with the White Sox, Rangers, Pirates, Yankees, and the Mets. I'm sure he loves Cincinnati the most. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that with it, that big belt on him holding that up. He retired from the league last year, and he said, of course, the Reds are his first love. From a great player to, you know, not so good a thing. <laughs> That's exactly it. Here, this We go back into the vault. Maybe it should stay there. This <laughs> might have been the worst ceremonial first pitch in baseball history. Yeah, this let's was take opening a look at day, that we can. 2007. And it's coming up the mayor of Cincinnati, Mark Mallory. There he is. Very we nice had all such man, great hopes. But not a much of a pitcher. He throws a pitch. Oh, and look at Eric Davis. He goes, hey, what, hey, what's what, this? Where did it go? <laughs> it, 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 it defied the logics of physics. There was there was no way that this was, we, we all thought it was a joke. Did he mean to do this? I mean, watch it again, folks. Watch it again. It's, gonna, it's supposed to go forward. It's supposed to go forward. What? It, <laughs> it, it, it just didn't go anywhere, anywhere close to the plate. But I remember Mark Mallory, he had enough, you know, chutzpah, and he was so smart about this. He ended up going on, like, I think Jay Leno. Oh, he was on with Letterman. He, yes. I'll tell you what, he got more mileage out of that bad <laughs> that pitch. That terrible pitch. And, and it was, uh, oh, it, it, was, it was, it worked in his favor. It was the worst opening day first pitch I've ever seen. Well, we have a short break in the parade. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break from our location here at Northside Distilling at Court and Race. Folks, we'll be right back.
one of the better parts because everybody is, you know, in first place before the game starts. And we have such a tradition here with the parade. It's the start of a new season. Like you say, everybody's uh, getting started. Nobody's ahead of anybody. And uh, there's always hope that you can do it. Welcome back, everyone. That's Mickey and uh, the Seavings, I should say. And we, we interviewed them yesterday. What a great Hawaiian shirt that guy has on. Love it. Love the spirit of those Reds fans. Yeah, and I'm, I'm willing to bet you could come down here any night, even if the Reds aren't playing well, and they're, they're cheering them on. Of they're, course they are. That's the kind of fans they've had here for years. Absolutely. We have incredible fans here in Cincinnati. Whether they can, you know, be good at every game, obviously not. But I'll tell you what, I feel like half of Cincinnati is already down here at this parade right now. That includes our Evan Millward, who is on the route. Hi, Evan. Hey guys, we just heard, I think they're passing you, the Oak Hills Marching Band. Let's give it up for them. Uh, hey guys, you guys have been waiting to hear for us to come talk to you all parade. We talked to you a little bit earlier. Where are you guys from? And oh, let me get down here. All right, what do you make of this parade so far? It's amazing. It's yeah, so what's, amazing. Been, what's been your favorite part? The Chick-fil-A thing right there. The Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken, right? I love Chick-fil-A. You love it? Yep. Can I get a Go Reds? Go Reds! Awesome, guys. And You're, bangles. And bangles, yeah. And we saw the Who Day chicks earlier. They're pretty cool. Who we got here? Wyland Builders? Can we get a Go Red? Wheeland. Uh oh, I said it wrong. That's the Cardinal Sin of TV News. Look at that. Wheeland Builders. Wheeland Builders. I like this float. Did you build Thank the you. float? Wheeling Builders. How long did this take you? You built a house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> took longer than a half. Less than taking building a house. But we've been down here for many years. The last two, we took a break, but we've uh, taken first and second place over the years. So you and got a reputation to maintain. We do, we do. And uh, the president of the company's driving the truck. He's up front, and he really came up with the This idea. is the day you really make him work for it, right? He loves it. It's a great, <laughs> long-standing family tradition of the Whelan family. The Whelan family. And remember, it's Whelan. It's we got it right this time. I know it's W-I, but you say Whelan. I like, is this? The organ behind you, is that the uh, replica? We, well, we were supposed to have a band in front of us, but I uh, think they placed them somewhere else. So, uh, woo, just a band singing. Of little ones up there. Awesome. <laughs> Wheeler Builders, thank you so much. There Happy you opening go, day. Go Reds. They built a house on their float. I, I can. <laughs> it looks like they built the outfield. Yeah. With, like the, the organ pipes on top, or yeah, maybe it looks, it's the World Series trophy or something. Exactly. It looks good. You had a good spokesman there from Wheeland Building. They sure did. And now we know how to say it properly. Let's go up to Jasmine Stiles. She's at the start of the parade. Jasmine. Hey, Tanya and Papa. Man, there's been no shortage of good music, good fun and a lot of good people out here for the opening day parade. I want to introduce you to some of the people on the sidelines as we wait for the parade to come by. I want to talk to these good people right here. What's your name? How you doing? Justin, man. How you feeling, man? I'm good. I'm feeling good, man. Are these your munchkins? Yes, they are. Oh, I couldn't help but notice. I'm a, I love cute kids. I'm always going to go to the cutest kids. Have you been having a good time at the parade, friend? Yes. It looks like you got your cotton candy all on your face. Uh, just a little bit. No, no big deal, though. How's it been having your, your munchkins out here with you enjoying this good time? Hey, man, it's been a ball. It's been a blast. I'm having a good time. They're having a good time. Everyone's having a good time. How you feeling about the team right now? Man, love them, love them. Cincinnati forever. Go Reds. Okay, so you home team down. Home team forever. Okay, tell me what it's like when you hear about, like, you know, bandwagoners who are like, oh, man, we're not doing that great. I'm going to hop off. Ah, uh, man, we welcome all newcomers, man. <laughs> Get back on the bandwagon. Come hang out with the team. Guys, thanks for talking with us. All right, we are keeping our eyes peeled for the WCPO9 float with our Good Morning Dry State team. They should be coming a little bit later, but, you know, everything's out of order. But that's fine. We're still having a good time. Tanya Papo, back to you. We do love that every year we get a rundown of who's coming, and it's never correct. But we, <laughs> if you want to see it like a bird's eye view of the parade, that is our WCB09 live drive. Whenever there's bad weather, we tend to pull it out so we can show you what's going on on the roads and you know keep you safe out there on the roads. But that's that's their position. Our Christian Scovira and Adrian Whitsett are with that live drive, and they are of course our Good Morning Tri-State team. Making a lot of noise, too. Let's go down to the stadium. Let's see how much noise there is down there. Caleb No and Marshall Kramsky are live there right now. Caleb, Marshall. 
Hey, good evening. How about that being tossed good to evening. It's by the day. legendary, time. the legendary John Popovich tossing to us? How, what, what an honor that is. You know, the one thing that always stands out to me on opening day and early in baseball season is the condition of the field, Marshall. It is just pristine. The grass. I mean, it is. It's just, and it's beautiful weather for opening day. As our awesome photojournalist Philip Lee pans around to give you a, a shot of things here, Marshall. The team going through batting practice right now. And that's the best part for me. I love when batting practice starts and the first one to lead us off for the active players is actually the biggest offseason acquisition. Will Myers stepping into the plate. He was joking around and throwing BP for a second, but he's going to be taking it. Will Myers does not wear batting gloves. That is a point he made, and I know you spoke to him about that. We talked to him about that yesterday. He, I, I thought it was interesting. I asked him if he plays golf, and he said he does play golf. He said he wears a glove when he plays golf. You see him there taking BP right there. We're going to get you back out to the parade here in just a minute. But we are going to be standing here and uh, bringing you coverage of the okay. Reds as they do go through BP before today's opening day game. Let's go back out to Tanya now. Hey. All right. Hey, I think that's Mark driving our live drive. So let's go out to Jasmine where she is live with our WCPO 9. Good morning, Tri-State team. Guys, bringing you some familiar faces right now with our good morning tri-state team doing a heck of a turnaround after the morning show we're still on it right now nice little overtime here one of our newcomers cameron and chris and adrian you've been doing this so i'm gonna x you out for y'all this is your first opening day parade with us tell me how you feel it oh it's so much fun just the energy like every time we keep walking more and more people keep lining the streets it's intimidating but it's amazing yes Kristen, how you feeling? So good. I feel wide awake as you're saying that turnaround. No, it's been so fun. It's warm now, too. I was cold all morning. Now the sun is just feeling so good. Yeah. Also, I just want to say I almost bought that hoodie. It looks a lot better on oh, you. No. Adrian, as a as a vet in the game when it yeah. comes to Cincinnati this is opening day, it, it's veteran it's status. That's that's, that's fun. It's it's now. it's two more than they got. You know, tell me what's the best thing about meeting viewers out here? Oh, they they tell us how much they appreciate us while we're out here. Uh, I guess getting to see us in person. You know, it's it's more of a connection than you normally get doing this job. So it's a lot of fun. There's always enthusiasm. Everybody's smiling. And look at the sun. I mean, last so year it nice. started raining on us. This is perfect. <laughs> yeah, way better. I always tell people, you know, they keep us inside with a building with no windows, so yeah. we don't get to see yeah. a lot of and sun it's dark and people. When we're on normally, so <laughs> exactly. Same for you. Guys, what is the best part of the parade you've seen thus far? I didn't know if you got to walk around, saw any floats. I mean, we're the best, but second best. It's the energy. I mean, just how everybody's been out here for hours now, and then they're still just. Waving, having a good time. Just going hollering. and going and going and going. Our live drives in front of us, kind of hauling butt right now. We're walking kind of slow. Kristen, I know you said you've probably gotten your steps in. Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> it feels good to, to get out because I'm new in town, you know, so it gets to see everything. Not I know. Well, now I'm not as. Good. I was gonna say, yeah, camera replaces you, so she's not the newbie for much longer. We're gonna let them interact with the viewers. Get out of their hair for a little bit. Say bye bye to the Good Morning Tri State team. All right, Tanya Papo, back to you. <laughs> how fun and I you know when you got to meet uh, Adrian Day you thought hell he's so much taller so that's what most people are saying right now when they meet him and speaking of tall how about our Evan Millward who's out there roaming around you know what it's a big year it's 104th parade it's the 100th anniversary the yes, Sons of Italy Al here first up where are you keeping the wine and the pasta you hold oh out on God hit the float behind us baby oh. we got the good stuff no one heard that <laughs> very good hundred years what does that mean for you guys? That's longevity. I tell you, 100 years here in Cincinnati with the Sons of Italy, we are so proud to be part of this city. We are ingrained in the heritage, Pompilio's restaurant, Buddy La Rosa, and Judge Ron Paniotto. We're honoring three iconic Italians, and all of our Italians, we love this city and we want to make it as great as possible. And this is a great day to get out and talk about it and show it off, right? Yes, it is. It sure is. We love you, Cincinnati. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. You. Happy 100 years, my thank friend. You. Happy opening day, everyone. We'll send it back to you guys. <laughs> you know, one of the great parts of this, covering the parade, is sitting up here or down there, is to get to meet everybody. You know, we're sitting on the set, and I, I did it for years, you've done it for years. But when you come down here, people come up to you and they introduce themselves and that sure. stuff. And they, they love it, and that's uh, 
It's, it's great for us to be it's out It's great there too. for us to get to be out in the community, and the community has all come out to see all of this right now. Uh, that's the Huseman group on your screen right now, heading down the parade route down Ray Street as it keeps coming this way and heading. It'll come starting in Philly Market, by the way, all the way down Ray Street till we hit fifth, and then it'll go left. It'll go all the way to Sentinel where it comes to an end, and you can see the smokestacks right behind them. They've created that for their flow and they're smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that they're having fun with this. I, I, I feel like this year the parade floats have been a little more maybe uh, decked out. Is that mm -hmm. a good way to put it? Well, I, you know, I think that we've gone through that period with the pandemic and, and things are coming back a little bit. More. Oh, people yes. are more creative. People are more expansive. They're doing some different things and there's just more of a chance to get back to normal again. Yeah, and, let's I agree with you, Papa. Sorry to cut you off there. Let's go back out to Evan. He's getting a nice high five there. Hey, Evan, what's happened with you? You know, because I said come, I said come to me because if I have to hear Baby Shark on this parade route, so do you. Uh, we're here with the Newport Aquarium, and we have a shark. That's not a baby shark. Though. This is not. This is Sparky Shark, named after, of course, Sparky Anderson. Hey, there it is. Representing, he's a 16-foot great white shark rolling through the streets of Cincy today. Oh, awesome. And you've got bubbles, too. We do. It's not a parade without bubbles, right? <laughs> so Newport Aquarium, we're bringing the, the aquarium to the streets with Very all these beautiful brand. bubbles. Excellent. Happy opening day. Thank you Thank guys you. so Happy much. Day. And baby shark do 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 do. Send it back to you. Do 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 do. Mommy shark do 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 do. Daddy shark do 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 do. You can tell John Popovich is a grandpa. You know baby shark. And it was like that's a long way from Captain Kangaroo for me. I'll tell you what, but it's it's fun for the kids. It sure is. Thank you, Evan, for bringing that to us. So much fun as we keep looking at this over. Opening day parade and the um, I mean look at the one we're like but eight people deep on the sidewalks today. Yeah. And I would imagine if we went up and down that uh, what is one and four tenths of a mile, you're gonna see this the entire time and probably thicker in some places even than this. That is, by the way, the East Central dance team out of your your favorite place on earth, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Well, actually, St. Leon. Oh. Yeah, right up, right up the road. And East Central won the state football championship, the 4A championship this year. So they have a lot to be proud of. It's a great school up there. And uh, it, they're, they're here almost every year. So it's great to have the East Central Trojans. Love to see them. Let's go back to Jasmine. What do you got, Jasmine? Look, I, you know, when we were kids, we used to like jump rope and stuff. I bet you wasn't jump roping like this. You wasn't doing all this. How are you guys doing this? Can you show me? It's a lot of training. Yeah, it's a lot of training, but once you get the you, you show it, it's really easy. Show me what you got. I wasn't doing that. I, we can't do that. Homegirl's in a league of her own. Look at them. Just, yes, get it, get it. <laughs> That's a great, I, I am these nowhere girls near go. in that much good shape or that flexible to do this kind of stuff. You know, oh they can say children are our future. Look and, at them uh, go. Yeah, I think they, they got it down pat. What, look at, what you, how do you do that? Can I try? Can, can, are you going to let me try? Okay. Oh, oh, oh please. I want to see this. Come on, Jasmine. You can do it. Yeah, go. Yay! They got me a longer rope. Getting her a longer one. And we need to get her a belt. So all the equipment she has is weighing down her pants. Oh, go, Jasmine, go. Go, Jasmine, go. This is way your sport than mine. <laughs> Show them how it's done. <laughs> I was trying to do that. Wow. Not even close. Not even close. All right. I gotta catch my breath. I gotta get some water. All right. <laughs> Tanya. Papa. Take uh, it away. I love it. Jasmine, you did 100% better than I could do. How about oh, you? Oh, <laughs> holy cow. I'll tell you what. I couldn't believe what that first young lady did on one leg. On one leg with her leg, like, sticking up over here like this? Yes. Are you kidding me? Way to go for you being flexible. That doesn't happen much longer. Keep it going as long as she And Jasmine being game to go it on oh, live good television. For her. I don't think I would have tried that. That was great. That's fantastic. What's headed our way? Take a look at this, folks.
It looks so great out there. Look at all of those people and all the banners and the flags and the balloons and the pageantry of overall. And, you know, look at that brave woman. She's got like a one shoulder top on. We're sitting here with blankets <laughs> on our legs right now. But it is a beautiful day outside for this Reds opening day parade, especially if but, you're in the sunshine. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. They're in the middle of the sunshine, right down the middle of the street. And also they got a lot of warmth on all the sides from the fans. And, and it, it is a fantastic time. I'm guessing it's probably mid 50s right now. Yep. So, so it's really nice. And you can see everybody's comfortable going up and down the street. I got to tell you, David Bell, Coach David Bell, of course, he understands Reds opening day. He's a guy that understands this from a community standpoint, from being in this city. So let's listen to what he had to say about appreciating what he wants the players to do and appreciate about this opening day. I mean, opening day in Cincinnati, I mean, it'll, it's never going to get old, right? Like, I mean, it is a very, very special day. And... I think we get so focused on the work and the everyday, you know, being in the moment that sometimes you forget to stop and be aware of things that are happening around you. I want everyone to be able to, to take that in and experience it because, as we know, being from here, there's not, there's not another place like Cincinnati on opening day. This is going to be my first go around really at a true opening day. Um, the 2021 season, still COVID, and then last year with a lockout. So I've heard a lot about it. I'm excited to experience it for the first time. And I know everybody in the clubhouse as well. We're, we're all excited. One of the great, bright, shining stars, Tyler Stevenson, talking about opening day in Cincinnati. Welcome back, everyone, from our location right here at Northside Distilling at Court and Race. Yeah, and he's another one of those young guys that could be part of this Reds, maybe the new Red machine over the next couple of years. He really has shown a lot of progress, and uh, he's going to play probably, he's probably can catch. He's also going to play first base. Joe Nuxall, the great, would have loved to have talked about Tyler Stevenson on the radio. Our Evan Millward has caught up with the Joe Nuxall Foundation. What's going on there, Evan? Yeah, we're here with uh, Joe's son driving the truck, running the show out here. What do you make of this crowd today? Uh, unbelievable. It goes right along with the weather, you know. Uh, doesn't get any better than opening day in Cincinnati. You guys are doing incredible work across the area. Tell the folks at home who maybe have just heard about y'all for the first time watching this uh, this broadcast. What are you doing? You know, Dad created this legacy. Uh, we have the, the Joe Nuxall Miracle League, the Character Education Fund, the Scholarship Fund, but uh, Miracle League is special, and we provide uh, opportunity for kids who uh, with disabilities to play ball. 
uh, dad would have loved it. Yeah, you've got sort of his guiding principles on the car and carrying them uh, in, in, the, in the parade here on signs. What are they? Yeah, you know, we're trying to spread the word of good character. We've got our great crusaders from uh, Middletown Madison. Just, uh, you know, get people to think a little bit about uh, being more respectful and kind and caring, you know, the traits that dad used all of his life. Excellent. Well, think of, who's this guy behind us? That's Joey the Can-Do Kangaroo. There it is, awesome. Joey the Can-Do Kangaroo, the Joe Knoxall the Foundation. Hey, thank you. Go Reds. Happy opening day. Thanks, guys. What a great guy, Joe Nuxall, and what a great organization his son is running for him in his Jim memory. Jim continues to do exactly what Joe wanted him to do, and uh, uh, again, the organization just keeps growing. And if you've never been out to the, their field in for the Miracle League, it's fantastic. It is just terrific. It is. Okay, I want to go out to Jasmine's house. Yesterday, I got to hang out with some of these folks on this particular float, and there they are. Jasmine, this is the most wild and wonderful entry of the whole parade. I mean, I think we're all a little biased, but we love us some King Records, and we love us some Bootsy Collins bringing the funk to Cincinnati. Bootsy, what you got to say to the people? Go <laughs> Look, and that's all you need to know. We also got probably one of the best dressed people in the parade. What you got to say to the people? We are here celebrating King Records' 80th anniversary. Fuzzy Collins and Young James Brown. Look, man, they were earlier. He had to take a break because he was flipping all through the street, entertaining the folks here. We got the musicians. We got, the, we got our guy in the second row. Hey, what you got to say to the fans? Can you play us a little song? Can you play us a little song? Let's go. Look, you've got some of the most legendary and prolific people here on the King Records float, again, including our Bootsy Collins, Cincinnati's own. Uh, they have so graciously stopped here to talk to some of the crowd. Boozy singing a little bit, getting in the groove, getting in the funk. No big deal here. We're going to let him do his thing. <laughs> Look at him go. Okay, so this is... Uh... This is such an incredible entry, King Records. Of course, they're trying to revitalize that entire building, turn it into a space that everybody can enjoy. So that's why that entry's there today. They have a fundraiser coming up tonight at 8 o'clock. And there is our team. There it is. Kristen Scovira, Adrian Whitsett, the whole Good Morning Tri-State team out there today, rocking down the parade route. Listen. You know, you know, this is one of the things we talk about. Adrian's very tall. Kristen is a teeny <laughs> tiny little thing. Everyone's going, wow, I didn't know she was so little. I didn't know Adrian was so tall. It's to get to get to, <laughs> good to get to know them yeah. and, and then join them in the morning and, and, and watch them. They, they, I, I don't, I'm just getting to know them a little bit, too. Well, they're a Three. great team. It's a good mm -hmm. group getting together. They're going to be coming up behind us, and we're gonna, I'm going to want to wave at them myself. <laughs> um, I want to go right now, though, to Evan Millward. He's out there with the Browning family. Of course, we lost Tom Browning, and we love that man. Yeah, and, and honoring, honoring Tom this opening day, what does that mean? Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, he's, uh, he's obviously with us today here with Reds and... He's here in spirit, and uh, as you see, they did a pretty good job uh, get, getting <laughs> it's his, a pretty uh, good look. down. Absolutely. He would have loved this, but he, I think he would have said, it's too much, right? No, he, I, I, no, he would have loved his family being here. He's, he'd love that for it's sure. It's Christmas in Cincinnati right here. It's there Christmas in Cincinnati. There you we go. love the Browning family. They've been a tradition all these years. Yeah. Tom's been a great guy, Mr. Perfect. We love it. We love that the fact the whole family came out to help celebrate this year. He did. So much for so many people. He oh, gives yes. so many people such yes. a good time as fans, yes. right? He, lo love he, lo he loved oh, his fans. Red. That's the one thing he always loved. And he loved the city of Cincinnati. And he loved his red legs. Are you feeling the love today, I too? Am. You can you can see it in the streets here. Everyone's been awesome. And, and the Opening Day gang did an incredible job here, too. Awesome. Is it going to be emotional for you later today as they honor Tom? Uh, I think the whole day is emotional, yeah. Um, but we're, we're really proud and honored to, uh, to be a part of such a great event. We thank you. We remember him and we love him dearly. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you. Thank you.
How times have changed. You'll recall game two of the World Series in 1990 when they put the red alert out for Tom Browning because Debbie Browning had gone into labor right. and was going to have one of those sons. That's right. And those sons there yeah. now representing their father's legacy in this parade. Of course, the Reds will be honoring Tom Browning and his incredible legacy, Mr. Perfect. And not only that, folks, just a thing about Tom Browning. There are a lot of athletes that live in this town that have retired and, you know, to Anthony Munoz, um, chief among them. And Tom Browning was one of the, among the most amazing guys that he would always come out and help any organization. If you said, Tom, will you help? He'll say, yes, I will be there for you guys. So it was absolutely fantastic. Look at what is happening here. A league of their own with Jasmine. <laughs> Hey, I, you know, normally I would grab somebody, but they're in the middle of this whole flash dance thing, and I don't want to mess up the vibe. Nothing worse than messing up the vibe when you're in the middle of your dance number. But the ladies have been absolutely getting it out here. I love all the baseball-themed things. We had, uh, like I said, we had the League of Their Own Ladies with the baseball bats. If you ain't got that swing, get that swing. We had somebody playing Nelly better up the whole time. I hit my chicken head for just a little, no big deal. And now coming up next, we got the Crosby Elementary Pop Cycles. Yo, what can't these kids do? They jump rope, they dance, they sing, and then, you know, they're on their popsicles. Like, who's teaching these kids this? Can I talk to you? Can I talk to somebody? Woo! You want you? Okay. You see how, did you see that dismount? That was smooth. How'd you learn how to do this? Um, hey, by practicing. You always have to practice to get better. Is it is it easier than riding a bike? Um, yes. <laughs> yes, when you practice, it's easier. Yes, it's way easier. Yeah. Okay, show me how you get on. I love you guys. He loves you guys. All right, friends, show me how to get on this thing. Oh, if Jasmine, don't you know, hurt you yourself, You made that look please. too easy. I, yeah, no, I, I don't have, I haven't hit my deductible yet on my insurance. I, I can't do this. I'll be in the hospital. And uh, like I said, it's going to be way too yeah, much money for me personally. I think risk management would say no. Look. <laughs> yeah, let, let's not get workers comp uh, here at the parade. No, then they got the kids on the double deckers. Dude, how long did it take look you to learn that. this? Look at that. Wow. See, we love an honest king. <laughs> An honest kid. He said it took him a while. It would probably take me three to four years to learn how to do just the, And then, see, now we can't just say the kids because there are people a little bit more seasoned on the pop cycle. So if he can do it, <laughs> you can do it. I can't do it. Oh. Anywho, all right, we're going to get you know, out of the way before we get hit by the horses. I don't think cycles in my future. <laughs> <laughs> don't get No, Tanya, I think you can do it. Hit by don't the give horses. up. I, 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 I appreciate your your belief in me, but I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to try that. Certainly not today. We're going to enjoy watching it. Yes. And by the way, that is the Crosby Elementary Unicycle Club, and they're from Crosby Township, and uh, it's great to see them. Before that, we saw Dance Flash Fusion. Those were the Rockford Peaches that were shaking it and swinging it. I mean, honestly, one of my favorite movies of all time is oh, The League of Their Own. Oh, it is. And it, it just, to me, brings happiness. Hey, can we do something? I'm going to throw you guys an audible. Can we, can we listen to this band coming right by us right now? Let's just listen in for a moment. Marching band, 29 woodwinds, 28 brass, 25 percussion, nine guards, three drum majors, and two people carrying the banners for the Ross High School Marching Band. They sound absolutely fantastic. They, they perform all over the country, by the way. They do. They get all over the country. It's a fine school. I'll tell you what, we've always covered them in sports, but look, at we get to see another aspect of the school here today with their music program. They have performed in Orlando, Washington, D.C., New York, and in fact, they're going to go back to New York to perform, and they'll be on the USS Intrepid aircraft carrier. Maybe they'll run into Craig McKee there for us. 
Now here comes our jump ropers too. Oh, they're fantastic. And they're from Sherwood Elementary, I understand. And they're gonna really, really, really deserve a plate of French fries and a cheeseburger after this deal. What is, is she jumping? I sitting thought down? she fell, but the, no, she, she she's, went down she's and she's like, jumping. Whoa. What is she doing? Look at this! Oh my oh. goodness! <laughs> There's far too much talent in this town. There is. That's Sherwood Elementary, the Rappin' Ropes, they're called. And these are second to sixth graders in the Forest Hill School District. All right, let's go down to the ballpark. You know, there is a game today. There's not oh, just yeah, a parade. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's at 410 is the first pitch. All the ceremonies start in the 3 o'clock hour. Doors open in the 2 o'clock hour. But our guys got let in early, and they are Caleb Noe and Marshall Kransky. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Afternoon, not evening. I got it right this time, Marshall. Yeah, the Reds are just finishing up uh, batting practice here inside the stadium before today's 4-10 first pitch. The ceremonial first pitch will be Todd Frazier, former Reds uh, all-star, and he won the, the home run derby here, Marshall. Uh, what an awesome atmosphere as we get ready, huh? It's so funny you said that. I was over at, by the Reds' dugout and talking to some of the players, Jonathan India, and the, the biggest takeaway is what weather we have today. This oh, is like man. an ideal Picture perfect opening day. The players are so excited. The, the, the greeting you said to everyone, happy opening day. Happy opening day, of the course. The big leaguers are doing that. That's this right. is just a fun, fun atmosphere. It's still quiet, but you could feel the storm of fans coming in. The, the Yeah, the, the storm. I'm glad that's the only storm we're going to exactly. get today. A few years ago, it was snowing here on opening day. We have something we could show you. The Reds officially announced today's open. It will be, of course, Hunter Green. Uh, pitching on the mound starting for the Reds today. Tyler Stevenson is at catcher. Jason uh, Vossler will, will play first base in place of the injured Joey Votto. Anything stood out to you? I'm excited. I think fans are going to be excited to see Will Benson getting the start in left field. There was a couple question marks around that. This is his first Reds opening day. One of the greatest athletes I have seen with my own eyes. Yeah. Hitting is going to be a question mark for him, but uh, that stood out to me. And Tyler Stevenson, who is going to be I think about 60 games are going to have him catch this year. He'll be playing first base in DH. They're having him. He identifies as a catcher, start the season behind the plate. So you, you mentioned Will Benson. Yep. You and I have talked some about this. Will Benson starting in the outfield today. There's a lot of new faces on this roster. If there is a new face, uh, a guy that maybe you don't know yet, but you might enjoy watching this season or keeping up with this season, I think Will Benson is your guy. Yeah, he's got that million-dollar <laughs> smile. He's a well-educated, smart guy, loves the game, great athlete, um, was a and top just prospect. And comes out here and has fun, man. He he's went out in here, spring like, training. He was and... shooting hoops and playing horse <laughs> with a bunch of elementary school kids. I, this is, I'll say one thing about this Reds team. They're a fun team to be around. That's the one thing that Jonathan India, Tyler Stevenson all talked about is the cohesiveness on this of this unit. A lot of similar guys that they have fun together, they hang out together, and they're in the city. You'll see them eating out downtown. Yep. This is a fun Reds team to be around. Always nice to see those guys try to become the fabric of the community. You hear that, man? Oh, there's Will Benson Sounds right like there. they're having a good time out at the parade. Hey, yeah, speaking of, speaking of Will Benson. Yeah, there he is right now. He's again, the Reds. At third base. Jose Barrero's at the dish again. Batting practice, wrapping up. Um, this should be, again, a fun opening day, beautiful weather, but it sounds like the party's still outside while we're in this empty stadium. Yeah. So let's send it back to you guys and see what's going on during the parade. Yeah, we're in the loud portion of the parade right now. The Peterbilt semis are headed by us, and they are honking their horns hard. And you can see, uh, as you take a look here at this parade coming right by us right now, that is FC Cincinnati, which is off to a great start. Hey, two years, two seasons ago, FC Cincinnati could not get a win, and now they're doing great. They are fabulous right now. Think about it when we probably started doing this parade uh, a decade ago. You and I didn't even know about a soccer team. No. We, we could couldn't even have conceived of a soccer team that had its own stadium, had so much success, and here it is going to hello, Cincinnati hello. full board. Can you hear me? Board. Oh, it has so. Oh wait, who is that? Go, go ahead. Who is that? Is that Evan? Oh, I think that's still the, the stadium. We're still hearing them at the stadium. But let me just show you from another angle. Let, there it is. So we were talking about that King Records. They're trying to start this rec King Records Legacy Foundation, where they're going to try to raise money to renovate that space. It's been designated a National Historic Landmark. Of course, King Records, Otis Williams. You think about all those. James people, Brown. James Brown. Yeah. And that is young James Brown up there singing. And he had been dancing. I met with them yesterday to look at their float. They had a great float build up, and they're going to make it the most live thing. That he's so 
a big and boisterous, of course. You've got to listen to all that wonderful music. Is that Evan's camera? Is Evan out there with them? All right, yeah, Evan, yeah. take it away. Oh, you know you got Bootsy Collins, King Records. I know we've talked to them all. Can we get a happy opening day? Go Reds! <laughs> Man, you've been working. You've been working. Thank you. It's all for King Records. King Records, 80th anniversary of Bootsy Collins. We're doing it for King Records. We'll be at Rebel tonight. Rebel, live performance at 9 o'clock. Young James Brown. Remember that history. King Records changed everything. Hey, here we get. Get down. Somebody make the noise with King. I can't get. Hey! The opening day parade. I think that's Elvis back there. Do we have Elvis? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a fantastic time. Another aspect of Cincinnati. You talk about the baseball, you talk about the football, the talk beer. about the music and the beer. Yes. But talk about the music. You get down to Memphis and you see certain places devoted to their start of the music, whether it's rock and roll or, or blues. Cincinnati had part of that too. Yes, they did, and I'll tell you what, look at Bootsy over there on the right side of your screen having a great time. They did so much to bring great music alive in the city, so it's wonderful to see if they're gonna be bringing that back there. Look at them, I just love this. Dance Flash Fusion has bringing, is bringing us the Rosie Reds. By the way, if you go down to the Reds Hall of Fame and Museum, they have an entire area dedicated right now to women in baseball. I went down there to check it out. We brought it to you as a positively Cincinnati to show, I mean, women have been part of baseball since baseball's very, very beginning. And, and whether that's been in an executive fashion or from a player fashion and especially during the war when you saw of course a league of their own the movie that's what that captured and i know i covered and and, and and met at least four of the women who were actually from cincinnati that played in those leagues during the uh, during world war ii and uh, uh you know they were they got prominence because of the movie but they actually played the games and then it was great and what else is great is this entire parade we're going to take a quick break, the last break of our entire hour. So stay with us as we celebrate the Reds opening day parade here on WCP 09. Actual opening day last year, I, I had to watch it in the tunnel. I was on the taxi squad, so I couldn't be on the line. Um, so I'm actually I'm looking forward to it. it essentially, is I guess my first actual opening day out there. So I'll be just excited.
only is it a different ball club, but I mean, we all act differently. Everybody's together. Everybody's for each other. I mean, I, I, it's my second year, so I can't really say much, but I mean, I, it, it's amazing to see how fast we all kind of like connected and came together. And I mean, it's just the way we play. Everybody's playing loose. Everybody's having fun. I mean, that's one of the big parts of it, at least from what I've seen. I mean, when you can go out there and play and have fun, I mean, it's going to make for a good game. Tanya, that's one of the big three of the Cincinnati Reds this year. Graham Ashcraft along with Nick Ladola, Hunter Green, and uh, it should be, uh, uh, they're going to form the nucleus of what happens with the Reds. Let's go real quickly out to Jasmine. She has some special guests. Hey, guys. All right, we just saw a pretty awesome motorcade come through. They are doing tricks and CPD might have some competition. Dude's just down there standing on the top of his motorbike. Can we, can we show him? There we go. They are phenomenal. They are doing death-defying stunts. The entire uh, people in the street have parted like the Red Sea just to get a glimpse of, it looks like it's Indianapolis police, but they have been putting on quite a show for the viewers here. I mean, absolutely outstanding. I don't think I've ever seen police do tricks on a motorbike, but I'm into it, and I think that should be a new norm. CPD, it sounds like you gotta step your game up and get with the Indianapolis folks. Are you looking at this? Are you watching this? How much more training are you putting in? Yeah, that's amazing. We're still watching the parade, and you know, of course, I'm a magnet for kids. I got Zay Zay on my arm. She decided to be here. Marmar, you want to say hello to the people at home and say go Reds. Go Reds. Oh, go Reds. There we go. All right, we'll send it back to you guys. I got some babysitting to do. <laughs> Yeah, you do. A little bit. They're doing great, though. And I want to get out right out to Evan Miller. You've got some special guests with you, Evan. This is as close as I'm probably ever going to get to Fiona. Fiona, take a bow, baby. <laughs> We're with the Cincinnati Zoo. Angela, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Very good. So two Cincinnati institutions, the zoo and the Reds. Yes. Opening day in this town is unparalleled. We're so excited to be here and support them, and it's great that they have us here. Uh, you do have a special guest, live guest, right? Shaylin. Cruncher. Who is this? This is Cruncher the American Alligator. Cruncher? Yes. He's very little. He is, yeah. He's a he's a toddler alligator. Okay, how big will he get? Um, he can get 10 to 12 feet. Oh, so he is very little right Oh, yeah, now. he's very little right now, yeah. Uh, are people petting him? Can you, you touch can, you him? You can, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Cruncher. Oh. He feels exactly like you think he would feel by looking at him. Really dry and bumpy. Yeah, yeah dry and bumpy, and kind of like a like a rock. Yep, yep. Excellent. The Cincinnati Zoo bringing animals to opening day. Miss Fiona leading the pack. We love to see it. An institution just like the Reds. Yep, yep. A very long time Cincinnati institution for everybody. Excellent. We'll send it back to you guys from Cruncher and everyone at the zoo. Say bye, Cruncher. Thank, <laughs> thanks, Evan. You know, the zoo has I'm always been a big part of this back. parade, and it became even more so during the time of Marge Schott because she had so much to do with improving the elephants. She loved the elephants. She loved the zoo. She loved animals. She loved her dogs. So it's good to see that they're still there. And often on the field, the players would come in, and they would see an elephant, a llama, <laughs> a goat, and they couldn't believe, that especially opposing players. Cincinnati players were used to it. The opposing players like, what? Why is there a zoo inside the state of Riverfront Stadium? And I hope someone was behind them pooper scooping. Yeah, there was. <laughs> okay, good. And, <laughs> and Shotzi, too. <laughs> look at what's coming up the pike. That is Cincinnati Circus Company. And you talk about people on unicycles. How about on stilts? Wow. And making it all the way down the route. Please don't step in a pothole. <laughs> My goodness. Mike, look at reaching all the way down. Um, I would have fallen over by now for sure. This is, and, and probably juggling mm -hmm. or making balloon animals as they go. It's a nice circus company, you know, doing a lot to keep the circus spirit alive here in Cincinnati. Well, there's no potholes, luckily, Tanya, in Cincinnati, so <laughs> they're not going no. to fall on that this road. That wouldn't happen here. There is still a lot of parade and a lot of people here. They haven't lost their enthusiasm. Different things go by, and they're cheering. Um, 
Yeah, and it, I'll tell you what, you know, we're at, at coming right by us at Court and, and Race, and by the way, thanks to Northside Distilling for having us here in your lovely parking lot to be able to bring you this parade. But at this particular corner, we're about at like the 100 mark of entrance, right? There are, I mean, 158 or so entrance and in, into this entire it, this parade. It's pretty fantastic. Coming up right behind us, you can see the Young Guns Equestrians. These are 4-H members right from Kentucky riding horses. That's apparently coming up right behind. There they are. Look at that. And 4-H clubs around. You know, you get outside the city of Cincinnati, and we have some wonderful 4-H clubs even within Hamilton County, teaching kids to love these animals and care for them as well. And you know, years ago, you'd often see some, uh, you'd see the big uh, Clydesdales. Yeah. But this is in some ways more impressive because these are the young kids from our rural areas that are, that are probably training, grooming these horses. Yep, learning to care for them in the way that they're supposed to be cared for and respected. And listen to them having a great time cheering out there. Love the old fire trucks. I know Cincinnati Reds opening day parade is complete without at least one. And as we've been mentioning, Earlier in this parade, in case you're just joining us, Cincinnati Fire Department, you know, one of the first, if not the first professional fire department in the entire country. We've got a great museum in downtown Cincinnati for our fire history. And there are those cool trucks running by. And if you have kids and you've never gone to the Cincinnati Fire Museum, please take them there. They'll have a blast. There's so much to see. It's so visual and uh, a lot of sounds as you could hear too. The right behind them is the Carlisle High School Marching Band. It has 70 members from that Carlisle local school district. The band is a consistent state finalist. They've got lots of contest wins and capital awards. They play at the collegiate level, statewide. They go to Disney World every four years. Listen to them for just a moment. Let's listen. drum beat in our head for the next the next day here. <laughs> I think so. There's another look at them. I think that's Evan's position. Evan, are you out there with the Carlisle band? Yep, your Carlisle marching band coming through right now, Tanya. And I think it's 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 perfect for them because they're saying go big red. And they're probably that's the <laughs> chant for the school as well as perfect for today. It works out just fine. And let's go get back down to Great American Ballpark where our Reds team. Can you not be romantic about baseball? It never <laughs> rings more true than opening day. The fans and the players, they align. It's a clean slate. All, whatever the expectations are, they don't matter because anything is possible. However, with this Reds team coming off their second 100 loss season in franchise history, there are expectations, Caleb. Yeah, talk about being romantic about baseball. You're a baseball guy. When Marshall took two steps onto the field today and realized it was opening day, there's that emoji with like the hard eyes. <laughs> that was Marshall when he walked onto the field today. Uh, yeah, the uh, obviously this is the first regular season baseball game that you can bet on here in the state of Ohio. Vegas has the over under right now for Reds wins this regular season at 66. Remember last year they won 62 games. Vegas has the over under right now at 66 wins. Marshall for the Reds to go over that number this season. What has to happen? Simple word health. The Reds have the pieces to make steps in the right direction this year. They have the young talent. Tyler Stevenson needs to stay healthy. Jonathan India needs to stay, stay healthy. Papo talked about that big trio of Hunter Green, yes. Nick Lodolo, Graham Ashcraft. They need to stay healthy. Health is going to be a massive factor in terms of that rotation. And one other thing, someone has to become that third player. Of course, Joey Votto, if he could have to bat 250, maybe hit over 20 something home runs. But that third piece, whether that is Will Benson in left field, Spencer Steer at third base, someone, Will Myers, the big offseason acquisition in the outfield, someone else has to step up for the Reds to go in the right direction, and they feel that they can. For the Reds to head in the right direction and to have some success this season, I don't think you need to get like an all-star version or anything of Joey Votto. You just have to get a good 
decent version of a veteran that is Joey Votto. You talked about health. One injury can be the difference between you know winning 62 games and winning 66 games. It can be the difference in winning 60 games versus winning 70 games over the course of the season. I think health is going to be a major factor this season. But then playing as a cohesive unit, it's been a big focus throughout the course of spring training this year and throughout the course of preseason practice. That's going to be a factor as well. Yeah, and Jonathan India said as much about health, health, health. It's a beautiful day, healthy day to be outside, and it sounds like an even healthier and happier day out at the parade. Let's send it back outside. All right, thanks so much, guys. Look at this marching band, Papa. Oh. Looking good up there. Hey, Jasmine, you're with them. Yeah, this is the Bethel Tate marching band, and I have no idea how you can play an instrument and fake trip at the same time. It takes a lot of talent, am I right? Let you hear him just for a little bit before we talk to some great fans out here. so much fun. That's so good. What'd you get? I got a baseball bat. Okay, that's good enough. Can I get a Go Reds on three? One, two, three. Go Reds! All right, send it back to you guys. <laughs> oh, thanks so much, Jasmine. It's so great to see all these kids out here having a great time today. Yeah, and I like the way that Evan and, and, and Jasmine picked them out, found a lot of different kind of kids and their families. That's what this parade is all about. That's what you want to see. And one of 16 bands that came out, they're uh, they're getting a little education here. They're missing school, but you're not having a good time. I think that's a better education to be out here. You can see coming up um, behind us is the Indianapolis Motorcycle Drill Team. You remember Jasmine brought that mm -hmm. a little bit to you. You can see that. I love that they're coming over from Indianapolis, still part of Red's country, by the way. So that may make a lot of sense. Papo, with just a few seconds left, what do you think? I think it's... Season's off to a great start right now. Now they just got to they gotta play some baseball. Thanks for having me. And thanks for being with me, and thanks for being with us, all of you, for the 2023 Finley Market Opening Day Parade. Oh, that's a sound we like to hear. You know what that means. It is the official start of the opening day parade. To be here on this day, and it's a great day. It's a great day. You, you, could, you could feel the magic already in the air, and you could feel the people getting all pumped up. Can I get a go red? Go red! It's just a fun Cincinnati tradition to start with our kids. We've met so many people who not only is it their first time, but we've met people who come here every year. They've been coming here for generations. Put the red on. And let's go Reds. The Cincinnati Reds fans are really there for them. They will go out there and, and play better ball up for them. Happy opening day, go Reds. It's so much fun, just the energy. Like every time we keep walking, more and more people keep lining the streets. <laughs> Fourth one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. <laughs> 